Like he has no idea what violence is. He doesn't know what anger is. Like. What up everyone, Shaquille Mahjoudi here, and you know who this is. He, against his better judgment, makes the trip north to my second-rate home of Canada to defend his undisputed UFC middleweight championship against Drikus Duplessis at UFC 297 in Toronto. The man dance master, Sean Strickland. How's it going? Not my best intro, but you know, we... That was good, man. That was, that was good, dude. So I'm gonna replace Bruce, Bruce, Bruce Ruffle one day. Okay, listen, as long as we're both flubbing on our words, I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. Uh, you seem very chill today, dude. What's uh, what's the, what's the energy like in Toronto? Oh, man, you guys, though I've been doing the monkey show all day. When you go to these, yeah. they put a camera in front of your face and they say, "Hey, read this line, say this, do that." It's like the most unauthentic monkey dance you could do. The the life of a champion. Now, before we get to the fight, um, what I would like, you know, I ask the questions, you answer. I would like two quick fixes that I could make to be more manly. Oh, dude. Oh, that's, yeah. Dude. Only two. I know that's the hard part, right? Uh, you train at all? Uh, Like, casually, jujitsu, five, six years, and boxing for a couple <laughs> years, but not like... Okay, serious. you train. Okay. Yeah, dude. I think it's more of, like, how much shit you take from people, okay. you know? It's like, whenever you're in the world and someone like puts their finger on you and like you have this kind of like inner voice that like tells you that I should hit this mother in the face or I should slap him. Like society wants to take your nuts away from you and demasculate you and tell you that voice is wrong, but that voice is right. So I, I think the best thing to do, you know, don't, don't create a random murder, but you know, anytime backhand a fool it, who has it coming. Yeah. Don't let a mother treat you like a bitch. Well, uh, that dovetails uh, very appropriately, I feel like, into the build that has been UFC 297. Uh, Creation of the UFC seating. <laughs> well, I was talking to Coach Nick Sick, and I asked him, like, what was the conversation with Sean like after the brawl at 296? And he was like, my first question is, did we win? Yeah, that's what he said. <laughs> Second point was, hey, uh, you know, look at Leon versus Colby. We can't be getting fed into what Drickus is trying to do. We're a cerebral fighter. For you, how hard is it to like switch the emotions off and focus? And how do you get into that right headspace? Come fight. I was happy, man. I don't know if you watched the brawl, but that You're was smiling. Time. Yeah, I get a fight. Like, and people. That's what people always are like. People are always like, it's funny. I was uh, leaving an antique store once. I was leaving an antique store once. And there was a guy that like swerved into me, swerved into me. And I like kicked his car and he gets out of his car and he walks over to me and uh, he was like, oh, you ain't no heavyweight. And I'm like, oh, I thought he knew who I was. But anyways, my buddy nearby thought we were good friends because I'm laughing and giggling the whole time. Like, and I crack him. And my buddy was like, dude, I thought, I thought you knew him because you were, you were so nice and happy. And I'm like, this moment almost hits me, jumps out of his car and has to fight me. How am I not happy? I'm a violent man. You're letting me, I never get to enact violence, not in a cage. It's nice. It's free. It, yeah, listen, if, if anyone found the right career path in life, I think it's you. Um, now, this is the only thing I'll ask about this. Obviously, there's been a lot of attention on your personal life in the lead up to this fight. What's it been like for you to just sort of like, deal with all the influx of attention on like your childhood and your life and open up about it. I'm just, it's kind of weird. Right. But I like, I mean, I've never made no, I've never made no secret about my life. I remember I did that. Um, I did a podcast with Ariel, Ariel Hwani that, right. And I remember telling him like, I went in kind of like my past and being kicked out of school, you know, getting arrested, shit like that. And you can tell this man, like he's a tourist, like he has no idea what violence is. He doesn't know what anger is like, you sit behind a computer and you talk, but like, you don't know what, like you have no demons, Ariel, Ariel. So it's like, I've, I've never made people who follow me now that find out, but I've never hit in my past. I've never hit and I'm, I'm a murderous human being that I love violence. So uh, nothing changes, man. Just another day in life. Uh, you're an athlete. You understand the importance of hydration. Is it worth the fact that I'm drinking my water out of a daiquiri cup? Oh, that's pretty gay, dude. <laughs> Did you get it from a stripper after she left your house or something? Yeah, it was our uh, bachelor bachelorette. The wife insisted on getting one, never uses it. So I'm like, you know. I, 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 not dudes, you know. 
There we it go. might be a spot of my co-main event if you, uh, you know, <laughs> they like the gays here. All right. Well, you know, if uh, Myra or Raquel falls out, I'll see if I can uh, make the flight over to fill in on short notice. Yeah, and represent the <laughs> alphabet. <laughs> I was thought it's so funny. I had one person comment like, "How could you let Sean talk to you like that?" I'm like, "What? What am I gonna do, bro? <laughs> We're having a good time." I don't like. Why don't it? Bro, I, don't I know. People, like I know exactly. It's all in good fun. Um, yeah, you know, like I mean, I did a interview with a Sports Illustrated, and these fools, bro. Like every time I do an interview with them, they always like try to bring up some shit that just pissed me off. I'm like, what do I? Like next time I do an interview with Sports Illustrated, it's gonna be in person. All right. Well, I tried to talk to you beforehand. They said I had to come to Vegas. So it's like, I, I can't. I'm glad we it's made me. this happen. I'm glad we made this happen. Um, I was talking to Eric and, you know, he kindly kind of kept it private. But he mentioned uh, on your way out before your flight, you kind of had like a you, you just had some like words to share with your team about their support for the camp. Would you it's be all... willing to share what you talked to your teammates about on the way out? You know, we live in this world, like weird social media world where like, you see coaches and, and fighters and they only like everything is for them is like an Instagram reel. You know, it's like, I'm not going to name any coaches, but like you always see these coaches say, I'm about to give a speech. Someone, someone pull out a video camera and I'm going to be inspirational. Like, but in a day, like when it comes to me and my team, dude, like these moths bleed with me day in and day out. You can't see my face, dude, but I got a black eye. I got oh, a cut here. here. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, these motherfuckers, like, they bleed with me day in and day out. Like, I would not be here without these guys. Like, the level of, like, the bond and friendship that you get with your teammate is something the average man will never understand. Like, I have my team flying in today. We're going to go smoke shit. Sorry, man, we're good. We're yeah, good. We're good. Yeah, the sun popped up. But my, we're going to go spar at Niagara Top Team, and we're going to try to free these people. We're going to try to meet each other, you know? It's, like, for the greater good of my fighting. So it's, like... I just like to, I just like to thank them for all the work they put in. They show up day in, day out, brain damage. Like they give, my team gives me so much that, you know, I'm forever grateful to them. I love that. Yeah. They, I saw a nice uh, feature on MMA fighting where your teammates outed you for having a big heart. So, you know. Well, was... yeah. And it's like, again, this is an individual sport. Mm -hmm. But is the biggest team sport you can think of. You want to go dribble a fucking basketball, shoot hoops, you can. You want to go fucking hit a ball. You want to go fucking throw a pass, you can. I cannot train without my team. Uh, I know we're running short on time here. Now, this question is obviously predicated on, you know, everything going right, you being healthy. I know Izzy's supposed to be in town for this. We have no main event for 300. If you come out of this, like, feeling really good, healthy, no injuries what's the interest level or the possibility of you making that turnaround for UFC 300? I'm sick of dieting. I feel like, dude, I've been like one of the most active fighters. Like every month the UC calls me to fight. Um, as of always, give me a dollar amount. I'll probably say yes. Okay. Well, you know, that's, I think that's why you've cultivated the fan base. You have uh, yeah. on the way out here, Sean, I would like, you know, I always like to play a game, do something kind of off the cuff. If you're up for it, I'd like to name you some fighters and you can just tell me what annoys you most about them and how annoying they are on a scale of one to 10. All right, let's you. do it. Uh, I think, you know, who we might start with here. What are you doing with uh, Ian Machado, Gary? Oh, me, dude, the cuckold. <laughs> you know, the thing that bothers me about Ian it's, and I warn people this all the time. Nice people who are, we give them credit. Mm -hmm. So what I mean by that is you have Ian, who's really nice. He smiles, he giggles, but he's a, he's not a good person. Like, you know, he's not like, he'll go hurt you and release the footage of it. Like he's a, but what he does is he smiles like the little is. And everyone's like, oh, he is a nice guy. I'm just happy now people are starting to realize that he is a dweeb asshole. So, you know, that's one silver lining of this. 10 out of 10 there on the annoying factor? So what? 10 out of 10, annoying, 1 to 10 scale? Uh, off the scale, dude. Make it. Uh, Chris Curtis. Oh, Chris Curtis. Yeah, man. My friend of me. Uh, yeah, Chris Curtis. Yeah, I love the guy, but I don't know. I think he actively tries to be oh. a dirty little So, you know, he's up there, dude. Kurt's up there. I'm going to give Kurt a solid 7 on the annoying. Sean O'Malley. Uh, Sean O'Malley, another dweeb dude, another clown. Um, you know, technically, Sean O'Malley doesn't really do much to be annoying. I mean, who he is as a person is a little questionable, but like, 
he doesn't really say much. Like he's not a really outspoken guy. He just has his fucking car and his hair and he plays video games. I mean, he's pretty, pretty low. Probably. Okay. Wow. Sorry, Chris. Uh, you know what? People only have great things to say about Eric Nixick. I'm hoping you can uh, ruin his reputation a little bit for me here. Cause I love the guy. You know, I think funny thing about Eric, dude, it's, um, you could walk in the gym and say you're like a belt or like a top fighter and he gives zero f like, and this is why like, you'll see a lot of like fighters will like come and go because I think a lot of high level fighters are used to going to gyms and getting stopped by the coach, but Eric will walk in the gym, like, Hey, where are your knee pads world champion? Like if you don't got knee pads, Cal. So I think a lot of, uh, I think a lot of snowflakes in the top and top of the industry go to extreme and they're like, wait, why isn't he trying to be my best friend? Why aren't we trying to go to lunch? So but other than that, yeah, Eric could be an asshole. If he liked you, he could be an asshole. Okay, well, I'm glad I'm on his good side. Last one, just to tie this back into the big fight, Dracus Duplessy. Oh, man, I mean, he's a nice guy. You know, he's a stand-up guy. Fuck, the whole coach cabin is a little questionable. But, like, yeah, I've never really I've never really had any, Even now, even after we got in a fight in the audience, you know, I still like the guy, you know? He said the fact that you guys fought in the crowd is like one of the things he respects most about you. So I'm, 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 I'm I like that there's a bit of a silver lining to all of this. Yeah, I mean, again, we're two fighters. Like you can't say that like it's a fight, dude. He brings it. I mean, that's I think him bringing it is what makes him so good. He just fucking he's down to fight. So you know, I mean, if I were going to bar fight, handle it.